There was a hack this last weekend on Luke Dasher, one of the longest contributing Bitcoin core developers. According to Luke Dasher's Twitter account, which also might be compromised, he lost about 200 Bitcoin worth about $3.5 million after his PGP key was compromised, along with a few other servers that he currently codes on top of. This is a pretty big story within the Bitcoin community for a few reasons. First of all, because of the ethos of self-custody that has been pushed around a lot over the last few months due to the, uh, a bunch of different collapses of exchanges and lending service providers. A lot of Bitcoin maximalists say, hey, you need to hold your own coins. Well, then we have a Bitcoin core contributor who does hold his own coins, lose them all. And if he can't hold them, who can? That was the question that was going around Twitter right now. Zach, I'm going to throw this one over to you. This was pretty big news within the Bitcoin community. Want to get your take on it? Yeah, this is really rough. I mean, I think we talk about the trade-offs, right, uh, of self-custody versus uh, taking on, you know, custodial risk with exchanges that may be doing bad things with your money. And it's certainly, you know, worth restating. Self-custody is a great option for many folks, but it certainly comes with a uh, a set of trade-offs. And I think that people need to be aware of that. And I think these examples are really illuminating for some of the scary aspects around self-custody that really honestly scare people off from the space. If this guy can be, you know, befallen by this significant hack, then you can bet, you know, Joe Schmo, random new user may also feel that he can fall victim to the same thing. It is pretty scary to think of the, uh, of this. This is a substantial sum, probably wasn't worth as much as when he acquired these Bitcoins, but still it's appreciated in value significantly over time. And this is something that I think is really one of those, again, those anti-FOMO stories, right? Those, oh, the hard drive is stuck in the dump and I go to the dump every day trying to dig it out to reclaim my, my lost fortune. This is some of the scary stuff that I think from a user experience perspective really scares people away from crypto uh, as a whole. And I think it is pretty... Um, you know, pretty scary. And I think my thoughts are go out to Luke here in this instance. This is someone who's contributed significantly to the Bitcoin community for a long time. And now he's um, in a bad spot. So first, first of all, just being empathetic there. But um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's scary that this can happen. Wendy, I'm tossing it to you. I feel so bad for him, but and I can relate to this on a smaller scale. I was once using this wallet, um, I think it was in 2018, and they ended up going under. And because they went under, I wouldn't, I didn't, wasn't able to have access. Like even with my private keys, I wasn't able to get my crypto because it was an app. It was just a hot mess. It was absolutely terrible. I felt really, really bad. It was, I think, it was on the lower end of five figures, which for me at that time was like a lot, a lot of money. So I can definitely relate. And I think that. I think we're in a very hard time right now, especially because if you read the Bitcoin white paper, it really talks about self-sovereignty. It talks about personal responsibility and it you know, really emphasizes the importance of removing the middleman. We remove the middleman because we want to have freedom. We want to have self-sovereignty. But at the same time, we also still have to rely on ourselves to be emotionally responsible and not make bad choices. Whether this was a bad choice that this person made, it's unclear. It's just humans make mistakes. And can we come up with a solution that works for the masses so people's crypto is custody. I know on TikTok, I posted something about FDI insurance, how big of a scam it is because um, th there's really not enough money on hand just in case there is a bank run or to kind of compensate everybody. So people are always like, yeah, I trust fiat. Fiat is way better. It's safer. I have FDI insurance. But in reality, FDI insurance is kind of like a marketing scheme, I feel like, for the banks to get you to deposit your money so that they can take your money and loan it out. So is there a solution for this? I think the solution will come out in the future when we're able to create better tools for people, especially for people who aren't tech savvy. Um, even in 2023, Bitcoin is still pretty hard to use. Like Storing your keys is hard to use. There's so many people that have been in the space for so long that have lost their control to their keys, lost their Bitcoin. And it's just really sad. And I hope that we can build better protocols so people don't get hurt and stuff like that. Will? Yeah, I'll dig into the story a little bit more because there's definitely more in this than just meets the eye at the first place, right? So Luke Dash Jr. is one of the longest contributing Bitcoin core uh, developers out there. So you'd expect him to have very good privacy or a very good understanding of how to hold cryptographic keys. And it is pretty simple at this point for Bitcoin, right? You just have like a ledger, a treasure to store your seed phrase correctly uh, on like physical paper, or maybe you like encrypt it on a computer and then you store that somewhere. A few different ways to do it. So it was confusing to see Luke get caught up in this. Also confusing the fact that he had hot wallets and cold wallets. Hot wallets normally connect to the internet. Cold wallets are air-gapped, meaning that they are not touching the internet at all. They're away from a machine. 
And that, that was, those were also compromised here. Like it was not just the hot walls, it was also the cold walls that were swept. And it was confusing to Luke as well. And if you saw his Twitter thread, which blew up, I think it went viral this last weekend. You see that uh, he was reaching out to the FBI for people to get in contact. He was asking questions. He didn't know how this occurred. So we're still waiting for a postmortem on what exactly occurred. It did cause a lot of fud out there on what was going on with Bitcoin, a lot of confusion out there. I'm waiting to see what the actual postmortem says about this. I think there should be one. It's more than likely that uh, over a few months that someone was just looking at his setup, looking at his security setup, because he is a pretty public figure and was able to figure out where there's some cracks in it and then was able to exploit it. Last thing that's worth bringing up on this, uh, we also have a tweet we can throw up really quick to look at Luke Dasher's uh, initial tweet that came out over this weekend. Another thing to bring up really quick is CZ from Binance tweeting in on this action. A nice little PR move from our boy CZ who said, hey, if these Bitcoins come across our exchange, we will freeze them and try to return them to you. Zach, I want to get your take on that. I feel like that was a pretty savvy PR move from CZ. It was a double, double savvy, a little bit opportunistic because he had also been sort of uh, championing the fact that 99% of users can't self custody their coins and, you know, you should be uh, comfortable with some of the risks of, you know, uh, entrusting your Bitcoin with an exchange. I happen to run the largest exchange in the world. Why would I share that opinion? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So he was sort of like trying to maybe do PR for both things, right? Uh, hey, I'm a good guy. We'll freeze the funds. Oh, by the way, self custody isn't always all that great. Um, come custody your assets with us. So uh, yeah, nice, bit opportunistic. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Wendy, I'll toss it to you. I think it was a good marketing move, but at the same time, like stuff like this is super, super sensitive. And if you're going to talk about it, like we talked, we covered this on my show yesterday and we were just very sensitive about the situation because it's not fun. It's not fun to lose money. I've lost so much money in crypto on so many centralized exchanges, issues with wallets, et cetera. It's just not a good feeling. And I get like, I understand CZ's point that exchanges can be safer in some cases because humans make mistakes. Like the amount of stuff I hear from my TikTokers about their self-custody fails is absolutely crazy. So I'm hoping that we can come up with better systems put in place. And I hope that we can come up with some sort of FDIC-like insurance for centralized exchanges. I don't know what the solution is. I just know that we do have to build something really great for next cycle because we're going to get a lot more people coming in. We've already got a lot of people coming in with NFTs, et cetera. And as you guys see, Board Ape Yacht Club holders, they get hacked, compromised all the time. Just a really sad thing. And I don't know. CZIC has a nice ring to it. 